Greylog is a very popular log management tool. Many people use it as a remote syslog server to store the logs from pfSense. Here on the screen, you can see a very simple dashboard. You can analyze the source IP address, destination IP address, the port numbers, a lot of information. You can slice and dice the data, but there's a prerequisite you have to have the syslogs stored in the database in a structured format. That's where the problem comes from. These are three example logs PFSense passed to Greylog. They are all in the raw format. It's not structured. Different fields are simply separated by comma and everything in a long string. To do any reasonable storage analysis, Greylog need to break it down to the very detailed field. That's why we need Extractor. Extractor in Greylog is used to analyze the input logs and break it down so that the information can be saved to the database. That's what we are going to discuss in this video. Some people may argue, why bother writing your own extractors if there's a thing called Greylog Marketplace and you simply search for PFSense, you have the whole bunch of free extractors written by someone else. You just simply import them and they are ready to use, right? I totally understand that. If these extractors work out of box, of course, you don't really need to write your own. But the problem is, these are free extractors. Basically, you are relying on someone else to maintain them. Especially every time when PFSense upgrade to a newer version, the format may change. Then the extractors may break. For example, I'm using PFSense 2.5.2 and I tried several popular free extractors here. None of them worked. Even for a very simple change in the format, if you know nothing about the extractors, how it's written, you are stuck. For some other source software, instead of PFSense, there's no extractors to be used, and you can start from scratch writing your own. That's the purpose of this video. On the Greylog webpage, you can find a very short article explaining why for syslog such a simple thing, extractors are required. It also mentioned what languages are supported. It first mentioned regular expressions, and then Grok patterns is mentioned here. In this video, I'm only going to use regular expression. I know in some situations, especially for PFSense, to interpret the column structures. Many times, Grok patterns is a better choice, can make your program simpler, but my goal is to just use one language. So that's why I'm only going to use regular expressions. To use regular expression to analyze the syslog string, you need to know the format, right? Luckily, on the web page from NetGate, it explained the very detailed raw filter log format. It explained the format in BNF. On the screen, you see two articles from Wikipedia. The left one is for regular expression. The right one is for BNF. If you are interested, you can read them, but you don't really need to care about the details. In this video, I will explain how to write your own PFSense syslog extractors all by yourself from scratch. And we will use regular expression only. If you are not familiar with regular expression, don't worry, I will explain every details we used. The only source information is the official document from PFSense, the raw format of filter log in BNF format. About BNF, if you have ever written your own compilers, you may know BNF is very formal representation of the syntax. 
and in the pfSense filter log case, you are just dealing with simple plain flat structure in CSV format. It's not that difficult. Even if you know nothing about BNF, you can easily understand it. Based on the BNF format in pfSense website, I prepared this diagram. I break down the syslog format in this easily understandable flowchart, and each block will be a step in our gray log extractors. If after each step we interpreted any fields, I will list them here in the gray box. You can see there are many blocks marked in red color. That means we won't cover them in this video. In fact, the goal of this video is never to cover everything. The purpose of this video is for you to know how the extractor works, how to use regular expression to write your own, and in the future, if you see any log you are interested, you want to interpret it, you want to save to database, you can use the same way to write it. Let's first check the pfSense settings for syslog. Let me go to status, system logs, and go to settings. As you can see, the default setting is the RFC 3164. In fact, the other setting is more modern, if you will. But by default, pfSense use this format, and in this video, we are also going to use this default format. I also checked this setting in the firewall log section because I want to capture all the firewall-related syslogs. By default, this one is not checked. Basically, for the allowed traffic, by default, it won't send syslog. So I check this one as well. You can choose what content you want to send. You can say everything, but it's too much for this video. So I only check this one for firewall events, and I simply say save. That's it. Of course, you need to set gray log as the remote log server. Let's go to gray log. On the screen, you see three windows. First one is the diagram. I'm going to leave it here so that we know which step we are in. And the lower window is from PFSense official document describing the syslog format in BNF format. And the right part window is the main working window for us to work on the extractors. Let's get started. Let me go to systems, inputs. If I go to managing extractors, you see nothing. So let's start from scratch, work on the very first step, which is showing here. Our raw message from PFSS is a log entry. Let's get started, load a example message. So when working on extractors in gray log, it will choose whatever logs it already received, and you can use it as your working example message. It's very convenient. I like it very much. Let's load the message. By human eyes, you can easily read it, but Greylog doesn't know what it is talking about. Every bold color stuff here in Greylog, they are called fields. So you need to let Greylog know which field will be your starting point. Select extractor type. Let me say regular expression. We are in the extractors working screen already. It tells us our source field is message. This is a very important information. We are going to talk about this later. But in this step, let's first focus on the regular expression field. To start matching this string, we need to first write a caret sign. It means we want to match the beginning of the string. You can see from the example message, the beginning is filter log. Let's do that. Then we are facing this square bracket. In regular expression, square bracket has its special meaning. But here, it's not really a special meaning sign. It's just a normal string in the original pfSense log. 
So basically, we just want to say you need to match this side. To do that, we need to write the escape side, which means the square bracket doesn't have any special meaning, just treat it as a normal character. Then we are facing this five digit number here. We don't really care what's the number. So basically what we want to say is dot. Dot means anything. And then we say plus. Dot plus means, okay, there is something here, but I don't care how many of them, right? Just keep going forward. Then here we want to match a right square bracket. Again, I want to use a escape sign and then use a right bracket. Then we have the colon sign. Let me type it here. Also include this uh, space here. Let me write a space. For the trailing part, we want to deal with it later in the next step. For this step, we are good already. We just want to make sure this log is for filter log from PFSense. We also want to tell the extractor that, okay, now you need to leave this part for the next step to process. How do we do that? We use the round bracket. Basically, we tell regular expression processing engine, you save this part for later use. Then how we match the part inside, basically we use the same dot plus way. By using this regular expression, we match the whole string already. Let's start from beginning. We match in from the beginning and it start with filter log and then square bracket, we use escape sign because square bracket has special meaning in regular expression. And then within the square brackets, we don't care what it is. So we use dot plus, meaning whatever characters there, we take it. And then match the right square bracket and then the colon and then the space, right? We are good till here. Then in for the remaining part, that's important, but it's for next step. So we use round bracket. That's the special syntax in regular expression. We want to save it for later use. Then to match the inside, we simply use dot plus. To validate whether this regular expression works or not, we say try. Yeah, it works. There's no error, and this is the preview. Basically, by using this regular expression, we get this substring. That's exactly what we need. Next important decision, whether you want to give a condition. The condition means whether you have some prerequisite to meet so that the engine will execute your regular expression, right? In our case, we are just the very first step. So no matter what, we want it to run. So that's why I say always try to extract. So you need to tell the engine how do you want to deal with the part which is inside your round brackets. Because the what's inside the round brackets, which is showing here, we want to save it, give it a name. Luckily, we have this BNF format from PFSS in the left side. It already has all the names. And we don't need to waste our time to invent naming convention and invent all the variable names. We can simply use whatever it is here. For example, what's this string at all? It is the log data, right? Let me simply give it a name, log data. Field name has to be number, letter, and underscore. So that's why we give it this name, log data. Even though in the BNI format, it's log dash data. Here, another option to copy or cut. That's very important. Different people may have different preference. One of my goal of writing these extractors is to keep as much information as possible, even though the information is not the final field you see in the green box here. I want to keep them so that I can debug them or in the future I may use it for something else. So that's why I do not want to cut the string from the original field. I want to keep everything. So in all of the steps in this video, I want to 
use the strategy which is copy. Yes, I totally understand. Sometimes if you use cut, you can simplify your steps, but to make the extractors simple is not my goal. My goal is to keep all the information, right? So that's why I choose to copy. Here I want to give this extractor a name. We need a series of extractors to complete the PFSS log analyzing. So that's why here each step you are doing here, it is a extractor already. For this extractor, as I mentioned, I want to give it a name, simply mentioned in the BNF format, because we are dealing with the log data. I simply give it a name, log data. That's it. That's the name I want to give it. Let me save it. We are done with the very first step. From the log entry, we derive the log data. The next step is very interesting, and I will spend a lot of time on it because after that you will basically understand everything and then you can write the remaining steps already. Now we already have the first step log data, right? We achieved this step. So the next thing is the second line in the BNF format in the left side. From the long log data, we want to analyze all the fields and scroll to the right all the way to this comma. So basically everything before the last comma, they are already the finest, the last level fields. Only the remaining part is something we still need further analysis. We need to do two different things. Analyze the part before this comma, and then we need to analyze this remaining part and we need to do it in multiple steps in this particular step we are only going to do this part to get the data before the comma get started and let me load a message see here you see a new field name log data where it comes from from the step we just created. It didn't appear here when we start the first step. Now it's here because we already have a step. Greylogs know, okay, there's a new field analyzed already. Let's base on this source field to start our next extractor. Similarly, it's a regular expression extractor. Okay, we have this raw log data. We need to first similarly write a regular expression to match the whole string. Look at this BNF format. Let's count how many fields we are talking about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So before this comma, there are nine fields. We are expecting nine commas. It's a seemingly very simple pattern. Let's write it. We start with the caret sign as well, which means now we want to match from the beginning, round bracket. What we want to achieve is to get this highlighted part. That's the goal of this particular step. We already read a round bracket. Keep in mind, because here we are talking about nine fields. To match all of them for each part, each comma separated part, we also want it to be recognized, to be analyzed, so we need to save them as well. So that's why I write another round bracket. And now let's match the first part. As long as it's not a comma, we are good. So how do we say it's not a comma? So here we use the square brackets, which has special meaning in regular expression. What I want to say is, as long as it's not comma, See the special sign? This square bracket, caret, comma, it means it is one character and it is not comma. Don't be confused about this caret sign with this caret sign. These two have different meanings. This one is in the beginning. That means we want to match from the beginning. And this one is in the middle. It means not star sign. We don't care how many. It can be zero, it can be one, it can be many letters. We don't care, right? 
it's very important we see star sign instead of plus because see this situation it's blank there's nothing here so we cannot say plus sign so we have to say star so i type a comma here then we are done with one field only so we need to finish this round bracket then how many such field we are expecting we are expecting nine so we need to use this special expression put nine in curly brackets this syntax means we expect nine of them that's the special meaning of the curly brackets so far what we are saying is we expect nine comma separated fields that's what we want to achieve in this step that's the data we want to save for this step so we are already done with the data saving part so far we matched the, this part already right and then as i mentioned the remaining part we leave it for the next step so we don't care in this step let's try it okay so it seems it does exactly what we want but unfortunately there is a small issue which is the very last comma because the way gray logs work is when we say csv format it doesn't like the trailing comma if we use this string and let gray logs to analyze the nine fields it will cause problems so we need to somehow remove this very last comma from this string how we can do that we can slightly change this regular expression here we say we expect nine such field right no let's say we only expect eight and then let's just match the very last field separately how we can do that we say eight such field and then the next one is another field which we want to save let me write the round brackets first then within the round brackets we want to do similar thing like what we did we want to say okay it's a non comma character and we expect many of them we don't care and then outside of the round bracket we want to put a comma in this way we match all the nine fields eight here and the last one here and we exclude the very last comma from the final string so let's try it okay we are good so far this is exactly what we want to get then let's move on for conditions we may say okay your string should match this format simply copy the expression here and let me paste here yeah it matches one store the data as a field the bnf format doesn't give the nine fields a name but uh, let's give it a name like let me say ip common data as explained in the very first extractor every time we say copy that's just my way to do that and the title let me use the same ip common data naming convention ip common data okay so at this point we already get the substring for the first nine fields right but we are not done yet because we need to break it down to nine fields and to do that that's a simple way because gray logs comes with a converter which is exactly for this csv situation yeah see here csv two fields because as it described in the bnf format all the nine fields they are simply separated by comma right that's csv format let me add one and then here we need to give it the field names it's already here in the bnf let me simply copy it okay here i have the nine fields copied already and the it's separated by comma and i leave the the other options by default we don't need to change it in our pfsense situation 
and save it. So we are done with this step. At this moment, you may think, finally, we are approaching the end to get the TCP or UDP specific data, right? No, we are not there yet. You know what? We are still in this step. This is log data. Let's check the log data BNF. Yes, it contains the nine fields we already analyzed. And then the last part is IP specific data, right? It seems we need to move on to this step already. Let me explain you why. Let's create a new extractor. Let me load a demo message. By the way, here you see more and more fields, much more than previously we saw where they came from, from our two steps, which we just created. For example, the real interface, which we just created last step. This time, our source data is still the log data, the same source field as last time. The reason is in grid log, it has only one way to base your extractor on, which is the source field. And then in the end, you can choose whether you want to cut or copy. There's very limited way to pass any information to the extractor. You have to rely on the source field. We still need a additional step just to get the very last part. So that's why we need to create a third step just to extract the IP specific data, even though it seems in the second step we already have it, but unfortunately we didn't. Based on log data and create one using regular expression. Remember last step, our goal is to extract this nine fields, right? But this step, instead, we want to extract this part, the remaining part. Our regular expression will be similar to last step, but we need to achieve totally different goal. We start with this caret sign. We want to match the beginning. And now we want to match the nine fields. Remember, we want to use the non comma. Then it can repeat many times and then followed by a comma. And then we want it to repeat nine times. In the previous extractor, we need to wrap it using a round bracket because we want to take it as the input to analyze the fields, right? But this time we don't care about this nine fields already. We want to throw them away. So to do that, we still need to use the round brackets, but this time we use this special indicator, which means Yes, you still use the same way to analyze this substring, but after you match it, throw it away. So question mark, colon means I do not want to keep this part. The last goal is we want to keep the remaining substring. It's very simple. We simply use a round brackets and we say we want to keep the remaining part. Let's try it. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. And similarly as the second extractor, here we want to say only attempt extraction if it match the regular expression. And I use the same regular expression. It passed. And then here, store as field. Remember the goal is to simply get the IP specific data, right? Then I want to copy the extractor name. Every step, I want to keep it simple. I want to strictly follow the BNF format. So this step, we already get this field. We are good. Create it. Yeah, we are done with the third extractor. So now finally we have this field in a substring. We can move on to the next step, which is showing here. So once we have the IP specific data, it can be either IPv4 or IPv6, and then followed by IP data, and then followed by protocol specific data, right? It's a fairly complicated format, how we can break it down. Basically, we need to do a if-else-like logic. 
in the interest of time, I won't be able to talk about every single step. So this step I'm going to talk about will be the very last one in the video. I will paste whatever I already have to achieve this, 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 this green box, the logics, I will export them into the comment area. So if you need it, you can import to your grid log and to take as a reference. Let's talk about how we can get the IPv4 specific data. This is a little bit tricky because remember in the very third step, we just waste a lot of energy and repeat several steps and get the IP specific data already and the IPv4 data should be a special case of IP specific data, right? But unfortunately, this time to get the IPv4 data, we still need to based on the original log data instead of this new IP specific data. Let me explain you why. Get started load a message even before we start we can already explain it see the new field we just derived in the previous step which is the ip specific data right you have no official way to tell whether it's ipv4 or ipv6 where is the ipv4 ipv6 indicator it is in the original log data it has a four here which is the ninth field we just analyzed, which means, okay, starting from this part, it is IPv4 data, but to make sure it is really IPv4 instead of IPv6, we need to look into a field before it. That's where the trouble from. So to derive the IPv4 data, to make sure it is IPv4 instead of IPv6, we still need to rely on the original log data. This step, I still need to create a new extractor based on the source field, which is log data. But this time, it will be rather straightforward because we already know how to get the data. We simply repeat very similar logic as we did in the past. So here, let me paste the original regular expression we already had in the previous step. There's nothing changed. We still want to get this part because this part is IPv4 data. If in the beginning it says for, we are talking about a if else logic. If here it says for, then this part is IPv4 data. Condition, what we have is for here. How we can make sure it's for? We need to have a similar logic here, but we need to change it a little bit. So basically what we want to say is, okay, we want to have eight field. I don't care what they are. And then the next one, I want it to be four comma. And then I want to keep the remaining part. So let's compare the difference between this condition expression and this regular expression. The only difference is for this one, I don't care what are the nine. I simply want to ignore them. But for the condition expression, I don't care about the first eight field, but for the ninth field, it must be four comma. Otherwise, it's not IPv4. I do not want the logic to proceed. Right? So that's how we achieve the if condition. Let's try it. Yeah, it match because this log is for IPv4. That's how we derive the IPv4 data. In fact, in this particular example log, the output, the target field, will have the exact same value as previous one, which is the IP specific data, right? But what we achieve, now we know for sure it is IPv4. Every step, we achieve a little bit new thing. So that's why you may have concern, okay, it's just to achieve this simple IPv4, we already need four steps or four extractors, right? 
yes, that's the negative part of this approach which I am using, which is I want to strictly follow the BNF format and I only want to use regular expression. Yes, you may have your own way. You can dramatically simplify the steps and combine several steps into one if you use the cut or if you use other patterns or languages. This is just one way which I prefer and it's very simple to follow. It's just it needs a lot of steps to do some very simple things. Okay, thanks for watching.